What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the G1X Mark III, which is a high-end compact camera from Canon. Now I just took this camera with me on a two-week trip to Italy and I used it for both photography and video. And we're going to talk about why this is a nice compact camera for beginner photographers or for anyone who's creating YouTube content or just wants to shoot video with a very small camera. The G1X Mark III is Canon's flagship compact camera, and it's the only one that includes both an APS-C sensor and a built-in zoom lens. Now there are some great features to this camera, but there are also some things that I don't really love, so make sure you watch this video to the end to get a complete overview. Now with new mirrorless cameras like the M6 and the M50 and other compact cameras like the G7X Mark II, you wouldn't think that there is room for the G1X Mark III but Canon made sure to include some features that would attract buyers to this higher price point. Now, compact cameras have always been really popular because of how small and light they are, and it's really nice to have one with such a big sensor. My goal with every product review is to give you an overview of the features of the product, but in a way that relates to real life use. And if you find it helpful, please let me know by giving it a like and then hitting the subscribe and notification buttons for more camera and tech reviews. There's actually a great deal going on right now and you can actually get $200 off the G1X Mark III if you use the links in the description. And if you do end up buying this camera or another one, I would appreciate if you use the links in the description or on my website to help support my channel and then help me create more helpful content for you. I'm going to get into the details of each aspect of this camera, but let's start off by looking at some key features. The G1X Mark III has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, and it uses Canon's super nice dual pixel autofocus system. It uses the Digic 7 processor, which improves speed and performance, as well as image quality. It has a 3-inch fully articulating touchscreen, and it can shoot video at up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's got a built-in 24 to 72 millimeter equivalent lens that also incorporates dual sensing optical image stabilization and there's a really nice OLED electronic viewfinder. It has Wi-Fi with NFC and Bluetooth, so you can easily move images to your mobile device, and you can also control the camera remotely for both photography and video, but there are some limitations which I'll mention later on in this video. I've been really excited about trying the G1X Mark III, especially after how much I love the G7X Mark II. So let's go ahead and jump into these features in a little more detail. As I mentioned, the G1X Mark III has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. And it's something that you don't really see in compact cameras. And normally, if you wanted an APS-C sensor, you'd have to go into a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. So right off the bat, that's a major score for the G1X Mark III, but it does come at a price. And the retail price right now for the G1X Mark III is $1,299. But remember that I mentioned that there is a special discount going on right now. You can get $200 off the price, so that ends up being right under $1,100. Now, in general, a bigger sensor is better because a bigger sensor can use more information to create an image with more detail, better dynamic range, and better low light performance. And this APS-C sensor is excellent if you're gonna be shooting portraits, landscape, if you're doing street photography, if you wanna take this with you while you travel, or even just do family and lifestyle photography. And it's also a great choice if you wanna create content for YouTube, or if you're just a hobbyist and you wanna shoot some video. It's gonna give you really nice and crisp video, uh, again, especially from such a compact camera. And as always, Canon's color science is awesome. So that was the sensor, let's talk a little bit about the processor. And here Canon used the Digic 7 processor, which is the same one that's used on the G7X Mark II, the SL2, the M6, 5D Mark II, and a bunch of other models. So this combination of the APS-C sensor and the Digic 7 processor gives you really nice and crisp images and pretty good low light performance, again, for this type of camera. And the Digic 7 also makes the camera very fast to operate. So the G1X Mark III starts up really quickly and it's very nice and responsive for both photography and video. And general menu operation is fast and then things like previewing images and video playback, all those things are really fast. And for photography, the Digic 7 lets the G1X Mark III 
shoot at up to nine frames per second in burst or continuous mode. So basically that means that if I hold down this shutter to get focus and then press it, the camera just continues to fire. I don't know if you could hear it, but it just shoots at nine frames per second. So this is a really nice feature if you're photographing kids running around, if you're at a sporting event, if you're trying to get pictures of your pets or any time where your subject is moving around because you can just hold the shutter down, take a whole bunch of pictures and then just pick the one that you like best and you don't have to worry about getting it just right with one shot. So next I wanna talk about resolution and frame rate. And the G1X Mark III can shoot 1080p or full HD at 24, 30 and 60 frames per second. And you choose between 24, 30 and 60 frames per second based on what you want your final video to look like. So if you like a softer or more cinematic look, then you're gonna to wanna to shoot at 24 frames per second. If on the other hand, you want everything to look super sharp and crisp, you can shoot at 60 frames per second. And I like a little bit of both, so I shoot and edit my videos at 30 frames per second. So if you choose to do what I do, you can shoot some video at 60 frames per second, and then when you're editing at 30 frames per second, that lets you do slow motion at up to two times. So you can slow things down by 50%. One thing that I would have liked to see at this price point is maybe 120 frames per second at 1080p. That would have been awesome because that, that would have let me slow things down by four times. And some other people have mentioned that at this price point at $1,300, they were hoping to get 4K out of this camera, especially because competitors do offer 4K video at even lower price points. And of course, we all want our cameras to do everything, but everyone has a budget, and I always like to evaluate how important each feature is to me, and that's how I make my decision. Okay, so let's move on to the lens. The G1X Mark III has a built-in 15 to 45 millimeter, 2.8 to 5.6 lens. And with the APS-C crop factor, we're getting a 35 millimeter equivalent of 24 to 72 millimeters. And if you're not familiar with crop factor, let me explain this a little bit. Because the sensor is an APS-C sensor and not a full frame sensor, what we have to do is take the focal length of this lens and multiply it by 1.6. And that's how we go from 15 to 45 to 24 to 72. And that just gives you the 35 millimeter equivalent of this lens, meaning that this lens, as far as how wide it goes, will be the same as a 24 to 72 on a full frame sensor camera. So the focal length of this lens is actually pretty good, but what's most disappointing is the speed or aperture. So the G7X Mark II, for example, has a much faster 24 to 100 equivalent lens at 1.8 to 2.8. So that means that on the G7X Mark II, even when you're shooting at 100, you could still shoot at 2.8 and get a shallow depth of field and more light onto the sensor. So you just heard me refer to it as aperture and speed. And the reason for that is the aperture is actually how big the lens can open and how much light it lets in. And the reason why that's related to speed is because the more light you let into the camera, the faster your shutter speed can be because your shutter doesn't have to stay open as long to let enough light for you to get a good exposure. And I have a video that explains exposure in photography, and I'll put it in the description if that's something that you're interested in. So again, as I mentioned, I would have just liked to see a faster lens at this price point. Now, having said that, the lens works great. It gave me really sharp pictures. It's fast and smooth to zoom in and out, even while I'm doing video. Another feature to mention is that the lens does incorporate a dual sensing optical image stabilizer system. And that helps minimize the appearance of camera shake by up to four stops. So ultimately that gives you sharper footage and images while you're shooting handheld. All right, so next let's talk about autofocus. And that's something that I suggest that you don't overlook when you're looking at cameras. And the good news here is that the G1X Mark III uses Canon's awesome dual pixel autofocus system. So for photography, the dual pixel autofocus system works really well to acquire focus quickly and accurately. And this really makes a difference when you're shooting and tracking moving subjects because 
you're able to get that critical focus for every shot. For video, the G1X Mark III has really smooth focusing when you change between different subjects or different distances in the frame. And this is definitely one of the best autofocus systems on the market at any price point. And with face tracking priority, it does a super nice job at identifying and tracking faces as they move through the frame. And what's cool is that even if the person is moving and gets closer or farther away from the camera, like the dual pixel autofocus system has no problem keeping them in focus. And this is really important if you're gonna use this camera for vlogging or even if you're just shooting video. Your subject is usually moving. If you're holding the camera and it's facing you, it gets a little bit closer and farther away from you. And people sometimes don't understand that those very small movements could impact your focus like pretty drastically. And you don't wanna come in and out of focus while you're in the middle of a shot. And what's nice about this system is it tracks your face and you can pretty much completely forget about focus. Like you will be in focus. So one last time for video or creating YouTube content, good continuous autofocus is definitely something that you're gonna want. And another cool thing that I can do is I can set up a scene with multiple items and then click on the different items on the screen and it will easily change focus. So I can get this really cool transition where in my video I talk about one thing and then I wanna shift the viewer's attention to something else and I can bring it into focus. And I never have to worry about pulling focus or messing around with the focus ring. I just click on it and the focus changes. And it does this really fast and smooth and there's no hunting for focus. You know, when like the camera tries to figure out what you want to be in focus and it keeps looking like it's doing this, there's none of that junk with the dual pixel autofocus system. For photography, you can use the dual pixel autofocus system just by clicking anywhere on the screen and setting that as your focus point. And if you wanna use the electronic viewfinder while you're shooting, you can use the touch and drag system. So basically you can use your thumb and drag it around this screen. And when you're looking through the viewfinder, you'll see the focus point move. You can put that right over your subject, take a picture, reframe it, move it, and you can do this really fast. So you don't have to bring up a focus point menu and then selecting a spot and then closing it and then taking your picture. You can just use your thumb, move it right over the subject, take the picture, and again, change that really, really fast. That's an awesome feature. And that feature wasn't enabled by default, so if you need it, go to shooting setting, which is the camera icon in the menu, page two, and then touch and drag autofocus setting and just enable it. And again, what's really nice here is, for example, if you wanna use the rule of thirds, so you don't want your subject to always be in the center of the picture, let's say you want it on the one third line, you can just frame it like that. Again, drag your thumb so it's right over them, take the picture. You wanna move them to the other one third line, you can do that again, and you can do that very quickly. All right, next I wanna talk about audio options. And the G1X Mark III comes with stereo microphones right here at the top. But unfortunately, Canon didn't include an external mic input. And that's something that's really disappointing to me at this price point. I talk a lot about audio and how important it is to video. And in this case, you will have to use the built-in microphone, which does a pretty good job. It really does. But you will need to pay extra attention to any background noise that might be going on. Again, at this price point, I really wish Canon would have added an external mic input so that I can use an external shotgun, uh, mount it up here on the camera, or even use a lavalier microphone if I choose to. As I mentioned, the built-in mic does a pretty good job, but it's never gonna be able to do as good a job as an external microphone because it's always attached to the camera. So the microphone is always gonna be as far away from the subject as the camera itself. Whereas when you use an external microphone, you can have the camera be 10 feet away and the microphone be like right here. So that just gives us other options. And again, at $1,300, Canon add an external mic input. And if you're looking for some other options from Canon that have a mic input, check out something like the M6, the M50, or the SL2. And I'll put some links in the description to those cameras and a few other ones just in case this is a deal breaker for you. All right, next let's talk about the build and battery of the G1X Mark III. And we already know that it's a compact camera, so you can see how small it is and it's really light. And this lens, when I turn the camera off, you can see it retracts and then this whole setup becomes really small. You can just easily just put it in your pocket. 
Now, Canon did add an electronic viewfinder, which is really nice and it's super bright and helpful, but it does add to the size of the camera. And this EVF is really nice to have when you're taking pictures outside, especially on a really bright day where you might have problems seeing the screen. The EVF is really bright and just, again, makes things really easy. Now, the body itself is made entirely of composite material, but it's pretty much covered with this rubbery grip all the way around. There's also a small grip, which is really nice to have on a small camera so you don't feel like you're gonna drop it. There are two dials available, one here on the front and then one here on the back, and the lens ring. You can actually program each one of them to do whatever you want in different shooting modes. So for example, when you're in manual movie mode, the focus ring is set to seamless zoom, this front dial is set to shutter speed, and then the back dial is set to aperture. But you can easily change it. So for example, if you want this ring to do manual focus instead, that's just something that you change in settings. And like I mentioned, what's cool is that you can do this for different modes. So the settings that you have for video don't have to be the same as what you have for when you're taking pictures. And I really like that Canon added this front dial because it added just another level of flexibility in terms of how I use the camera. And it's particularly helpful when I shoot manual, which is pretty much all the time, I can very easily change aperture and shutter speed without having to click another button or go into the menu. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the battery. The G1X Mark III uses Canon's NB13L lithium ion battery pack, and it has 1250 milliamps per hour. And the battery does an okay job, but if you plan on using it all day, I would definitely get another battery and maybe even two. When it comes to batteries, I'd always rather have extra batteries that I don't end up using then run out of power in the middle of the day. And this isn't specific to the G1X Mark III. A lot of mirrorless and compact cameras don't have great battery life for a lot of reasons, one of which, for example, is that the screen stays on most of the time. Okay, so let's talk more about this screen. And the G1X Mark III has a fully articulating three inch touchscreen, which Canon calls very angle. And this is something that you need if you're a vlogger or a YouTuber, and it's a really nice feature to have even for photography. So if you're behind the camera, you can just flip it open and then lock it back in place and now you can see it. And then on the other hand, if you're vlogging or you're in front of the camera, you can just flip it out and point it at yourself and then you could see that you're in focus uh, and exactly how you're framed. And this could be really helpful if you wanna shoot from a really low angle. So for example, if you want this camera to be down on the ground and you don't wanna go laying down on the ground, you can just flip it up and then point the screen up. And then you can look down on it without having to get that low. And the opposite is also true. So for example, if there are some people in front of you and you need to hold the camera up in the air and look over them, you can point the screen down and look up at it and you can see exactly what the camera is gonna see, even though it's way higher than you. And the screen is a full touch screen, so you can control the menu or change any of the settings and features of the camera just using the screen. And then of course, as part of the dual pixel autofocus system, you can just touch anywhere on the screen to set focus. And this screen is really nice and bright and it worked great for me even in direct sunlight. And the last thing I wanna mention about the body is that it has a dust and moisture resistant design. That's supposed to give this camera some weatherproofing and let you use it in harsher conditions. All right, so let's talk about connectivity options. And like a lot of other Canon cameras, the G1X Mark III comes with built-in Wi-Fi with NFC or near field communication, which lets you connect to a mobile device or a phone and then easily transfer images and video. And that's a nice feature if I'm out on a shoot and I wanna very quickly post some images to social media, I can just transfer them to my phone, do a quick edit, and then post them. Now, as far as remote control with the Canon Camera Connect app, the G1X Mark III is somewhere between the M6 and the M50 in terms of features. Now, uh, if you watch my Canon M6 review, you know that I was pretty frustrated with the fact that you can only shoot stills with the Canon Camera Connect app, and you couldn't start or stop video and you definitely couldn't change any settings on it. Now on the other hand, the M50 has full functionality. Like you can control everything you want with the app. So with the G1X Mark III, I could start and stop videos. I could take pictures. I could control exposure compensation and focus mode and even a focus point and I could change the zoom. But all the other features were grayed out regardless of what mode I was shooting in. 
And worse than that, it didn't even show me the settings. So look, I didn't even know what aperture and shutter speed the camera was using. And I don't understand why Canon can't just be consistent with that feature. Just make everything work like the M50, please. All right, so next let's talk about who this camera would be good for as far as skill level is concerned. The G1X Mark III is a compact camera. So like by default, you're probably thinking it's targeted towards beginner photographers and videographers. But with all the features that were added and with the larger sensor, it would definitely work for more advanced users that are looking for a compact solution. Now, if you're a beginner, you can just put everything on auto and just start taking pictures and shooting video and you don't have to worry about anything. And then as you get to know the camera and you learn more about photography, you can start moving into aperture priority or shutter priority and then finally shoot in manual if you want to. And the more advanced users can immediately get full control in manual mode for both photography and video. Okay, I wanna talk about a few other features that might help you make a buying decision. First, I wanna talk about image stabilization. And the G1X Mark III does not have in-body image stabilization, but it does have a dual sensing image stabilizer system in the lens itself. And this system will help you when you're hand holding this camera, and it's supposed to have a range of up to four stops. But remember that this isn't going to give you the same results that you would get if you use the three axis gimbal with this camera. And I'll put some links in the description to some gimbals that would be good to pair up with the G1X Mark III. Now, I already mentioned this before, but Canon did include a really nice OLED electronic viewfinder. And that is something that I expect at this price point. If you buy a camera like the M6, for example, you can add an EVF, but it will cost you an extra 200 bucks. And I know a lot of photographers prefer to use the viewfinder when they're shooting portraits, uh, and then also especially when you're outside. Okay, next I wanna talk about time-lapse, and it is super easy to do time-lapse with the G1X Mark III. There are three specific time-lapse scenarios built in, fast, slow, and then slower subject movement. And they will automatically pick the right settings for the time-lapse. Now, once you select one of these and tell the camera how many shots you want it to take, the camera will show you how long it will take to shoot and then how long the final time-lapse video will be. And if you're not happy with these presets, you can always change them yourself and there's always a reset button. And I'll do a dedicated video about time-lapse, so if you're interested, hit the subscribe and notification button so that you're notified when it's published. Another nice feature of the G1X Mark III is that for photography, it does have a built-in flash. So you just pop it out like that and it's small, but again, for this size camera, it does a pretty good job. And here's an example of how I used it as a fill flash. So I exposed this image for the sky, and then I added the flash to light up the subject. And that's where shooting in manual mode is really nice. Okay, so the G1X Mark III is a great choice if you're looking for a compact camera with a really nice APS-C sensor. It's a good camera for vlogging, creating YouTube content, and also if you wanna have a really nice and portable camera for photography. The APS-C sensor and the Digix 7 image processor are a great combination, and they give you nice results in low light. You can shoot at full HD or 1080p at up to 60 frames per second. And again, remember that lets you slow things down by 50% if you edit your videos at 30 frames per second. We've got the 24 to 72 millimeter equivalent lens that gives you nice focal range to work with, but I do wish that it was a little faster than that. The dual pixel autofocus system is amazing. It's fast, reliable. It does a great job at tracking faces and moving subjects, like even as they move through the frame, and it's perfect for both photography and video. There is a built-in microphone, but no external mic input, which to me is pretty disappointing for a $1,300 camera. The articulating or very angle screen is also a fantastic feature, and I think that anyone shooting stills or video is really gonna like using it. It's super small and portable, and it's a great option for photographers who don't want a bulky or heavy camera with them. The size and then also the weight are great for YouTubers, for vloggers, or for anyone that wants to take this camera with them everywhere they go. It's light, but then at the same time has nice build quality, a very secure grip, and then an excellent electronic viewfinder. You can use Wi-Fi to easily move images and video between the camera and a mobile 
mobile device, but again, I'm super disappointed at the lack of functionality of using the Canon Camera Connect app. And even though it's targeted at beginners, there are a ton of features and manual settings and control that more advanced users are going to appreciate. And finally, I talked about in-lens image stabilization, the time-lapse mode that lets you easily get time-lapse movies with just a couple of clicks. But do remember to get an extra battery if you plan on using this camera for an entire day. The G1X Mark III sells for $12.99, and I'll put links in the description to where you can find the best price on this camera because there are always discounts and specials going on and those links will always be updated so that you get the lowest price. So speaking of that, as I mentioned, at the time that I'm making this video, there is a $200 off special going on. So again, just use the links in the descriptions and you'll automatically get it. I really hope this video gave you a good overview of the Canon G1X Mark III. If it did, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and then hit the subscribe and notification buttons for more camera and tech reviews. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. Good luck and see you soon.